Good day, good day everyone, and once again we're back, or should I say welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, just kidding and pulling your leg. Alright, uh, so we are looking at rates of reactions now. Alright, so um, they say the graph below shows the change in potential energy for the reaction where limestone is changed into lime, right? They say the balanced equation for their, the, this reaction rather uh, is given as follows. Now, if you don't mind, I'm just for the purposes of this question, uh, I'm just going to zoom into it. Um, so we've got the reaction there. Now, they're asking, is the forward reaction exothermic or endothermic? Now, I did go through these kind of graphs uh, to some extent. Uh, please note, when you've got a graph that does uh, that, so that starts at the bottom, ends up at the top, that tells us that the forward reaction is endothermic. And how do we know that? Because you've put in energy to get your products, uh, obviously, to have a much higher energy level. So this is what we call the energy of the products. So that's the energy of the products, 420 there. Okay. And this would be the potential energy, obviously, of the reactants. Uh, so they start uh, seemingly at zero there. So you needed to put energy in order for them uh, to get to that point, right? Uh, which is 420. So this would be for an endothermic, uh, 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 endothermic reaction. Did I say endothermic at first? Yeah. Uh, so uh, endothermic reaction. And remember, the one for exothermic reaction... Uh, always starts with higher energy for reactants and lower pro and, and ends up with um, you know lower product uh, energy for products right so in this case they're asking us is the forward reaction endothermic or exothermic so in this case we do know for sure that's going to be uh, endothermic okay right and then they say calculate the heat of the reaction now remember um, just a couple of things for me to remind you of. There are several things that we can uh, kind of deduce from this graph. You can read from it uh, the activation energy for the forward reaction. So um, let me just use my eraser there. Uh, okay, so we can deduce from this graph uh, the activation energy for the forward reaction there. That's a much better line. Right, so that line there, okay, so if I take 480 minus 0, that would give me the activation energy for the forward reaction, right? Uh, and if I wanted to find out the activation energy for the reverse reaction, so for the forward reaction, you always say, uh, the activation, the energy of the activation complex, which is uh, the part at the top there, okay, activation complex, okay, or activated complex, whatever you want to call it. So it's always the peak minus the energy of your uh, reactants where the graph started, right? And then for the reverse reaction, you're going to say, well, it's peak minus where the products would have started. So it would be that little value there, 480 minus 420. That would be for the reverse reaction, right? But now, uh, please note, they're looking for the uh, heat of the reaction. Okay, so you always take the energy of the products, okay? And you subtract the energy of the reactants. Okay, so that's delta H. Okay, so... Uh, in this case, I'm going to say, well, my delta H value, so that's 5.1.2. Okay, so my delta H value, that's going to be the energy of products minus the energy of reactants. Okay. Don't be lazy like me and write their products, right? Uh, so the energy of the products, we said that was 420, okay, minus 0. So that's 420 minus 0. And that would give us, f sorry, 420. Uh, that should be in kilojoules per mole. Uh, that's kilojoules per mole. That's the heat of the reaction, right? 
Okay, so the next one, they say write down the activation energy uh, for the reverse reaction. Ah, well, um, of course, we actually did say that they can ask us that, right? And we did say that for the reverse reaction, all you simply do is take uh, the peak minus the energy of the uh, uh, products. Um, in this case, that's going to be 400, no, well, 480 minus 420, all right? So in the, uh, that would be uh, 60, right? Okay, so 480 minus 420. So they said write it down. So I don't need to actually, um, so the activation energy is 60 kilojoules per mole. All right. Uh, I did say that for the um, uh, forward reaction, it would have been 480, right? Um, because you're taking from the uh, peak uh, to where the reactants are, right? Okay, uh, I think let's just rather uh, skip to the next question, which is 5.2. Uh, actually, the graph they are referring to is the graph right here. So they say the following graph represents the number of particles against a specific amount of kinetic energy, right? Um, energy of the molecules, rather. Uh, they say the data uh, for samples R and S was obtained at different temperatures, um, which affects the rate of reaction. Now, I want you to note for temperature, uh, for the first graph, R, right? You'll see that your uh, your graph is sort of leaning more towards the left, okay? And it has a higher peak. Remember, when you've got that, uh, it means that would have happened at a lower temperature, right? Uh, so graph R would actually be at lower temperature, whereas graph S would be at higher temperature. How do I know this? Uh, because the average kinetic energy uh, in this case, so the peak is has moved somewhat to the right, and in this case, it has a lower peak as well. Okay, the distribution is much wider in this case. So they say define the term rate of reaction. Okay, so we know that that's the change in concentration of the reactants, uh, or you can say products formed uh, per unit of time. Okay, um, right. Or you can say that's the rate of concentration, of change rather, of the concentration of the reactants, right, uh, per unit of time, right. They say, what does the area uh, to the right of the line uh, T represent? Now, line T represents what we call the um, activation energy. So this is the minimum energy required for a reaction to take place. So anything before T uh, or rather any molecules, uh, particles be before T or the energy before T rather, means that uh, no effective collisions take place, right? But the area after T uh, in this case means that uh, there will be effective collisions that uh, take place, right? They pr the probability of effective collisions taking place um, uh, uh, would therefore be uh, higher. All right. Uh, so, in this case, we're going to say, well, 5.2.2, what does the area to the right of line T represent? Okay, uh, it represents uh, particles or energy, or rather, let, let's say, sufficient uh, kinetic energy. Okay, right, so it represents sufficient kinetic energy in this case, uh, where we've got particles that are able to have effective collisions. Okay, right. So uh, 5.2.3, they say which sample uh, was at higher temperature, right? Only sample R or sample S. Remember, we did say that uh, sample S would be the one at higher temperature. Okay, so, uh, and the reason for that is uh, in this case, the distribution becomes wider and the peak is lower. So you know that happened at uh, temperature 
uh, I mean, at a higher temperature. And by the way, the average kinetic energy, that's why it's shifted more to the right. Okay, the average kinetic energy is much higher there, right? Uh, they say explain uh, the answer to question 5.2.3. Well, I've kind of done that, didn't I? Uh, by using the collision theory, okay? All right, so uh, in this case, if we use um, an increase uh, in temperature, okay, um, will increase the average kinetic energy, the average kinetic energy of particles, right? Uh, energy of particles okay so uh, what happened uh, sample R has a greater number Okay, so if you look at sem uh, sorry man, I said sample R, right? I was supposed to say sample S. Sorry about that. Uh, that sample S with a higher temperature. I do sincerely apologize, right? That sample S. Okay, uh, so before you uh, have a bad comment, <laughs> all right, uh, please make sure that you... Uh, watch this video till the end. Okay, so sample S uh, in this case has a higher uh, kinetic uh, or rather uh, average kinetic energy or more particles in this case have sufficient uh, uh, has more particles more particles okay with sufficient with sufficient kinetic energy okay so more collisions will take place per second more effective collisions will take place per second okay Per second per second okay right um something to that extent okay so uh, you can write it in the way that feels natural and comfortable for you okay so that is how i would explain it okay right so i do apologize there it was supposed to be sample s right now let's go to the next portion they say um so we've got 11 grams of magnesium ribbon Okay, that reacts with, with uh, a 0 0.25 moles per cubic decimeter uh, hydrochloric acid solution at temperature 25 um, according to the following balanced reaction. Now, what they do, they've, they've given us the, uh, obviously the reaction there. They say a table of results is given below, right? So they've given us the results of what happens during the course of that reaction, right? Now they say use the um the graph paper that is printed uh, on the last page uh, of the question paper plot the graph of these results. Now ladies and gents I'm not going to do that uh, otherwise this video is going to take us a long time. Now re the thing for you to remember is that you know when you draw these graphs uh, to some extent uh, you always need to be mindful of choosing a proper scale okay now when you're choosing a proper scale um so in this case it would be the volume of hydrogen okay so volume uh, of h2 okay um oh sorry actually what's in brackets is the cubic centimeters and then uh, we've got time in this case, that's going to be in minutes. Okay, so our time is not in seconds this time. So choose a proper scale. Um, if I look at that, 
Um, so for time, I think that uh, for time, that's quite easy. You're going to have it incrementing at uh, 0 0.5. So you'll have 0 0.5 there, 1, 1 1.5, 2, and so on and so forth, right? And then when I look at the one for volume, actually, um, depending on how many lines you have, um, I think, yeah, you can either choose 10. Yeah, I think I would, let's see. Yeah, depending, depending on how many lines you have, uh, actually, I think you could have also chosen 5, okay? Uh, so that would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Yeah, I think 5 would do, right? Uh, 15, 20, 25, and 30. And of course, you've got 35, okay? Right. And of course, what you'd simply do is just try to plot uh, those points. So at 0 0.5, you've got, I mean, at 0, you've got 0 and 0. Uh, you've got uh, 0 0.5 and 17, all right? So you'd have 0 0.5 and 17 somewhere there. Uh, you'd have 1 and 25. So that's 1 and 25. Uh, so there's our next point there, okay? Um, obviously, your graph should be more accurate. Uh, you've got... 1 and 25, 1.5 and 30. Okay, so you'll have 1.5 and 30. Okay, and you'll have 2 and 33. All right, so you'll have 2 and 33. Not far from there. And then you've got, yeah, both 2.5 and 3. And 3 at 35. Okay. Both of them at 35. So you can see our graph kind of goes something like this. Okay. So that's what your graph would uh, somewhat look like, right? Uh, in this case, uh, you, can, uh, you can obviously uh, choose a different scale. But I think this one was, was really quite good. Okay, right. So they say um, in a second experiment, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. I think I've uh, missed a point there, uh, a question. So they say 5.2.3, use the graph and explain what happens with the reaction between a minute, uh, two minutes and uh, three minutes. Okay, so in that case, you see that between two and three, uh, what happens is that our graph now starts to become con uh, constant. So it means that you are running out of one of your reactants, right? Uh, or the graph reaches completion, okay? So whichever one between the two, um, uh, so that's 5.3.2, okay? Um, in this case, uh, it means that you are running out, okay? Um, or you can say that the graph reaches completion, okay? Or rather, your reaction reaches uh, completion, all right? Or you can say your reaction stops, okay? All right. Now, uh, in the next one, they say in a second experiment, the concentration of hydrochloric acid changed from 0 0.25 uh, to one, so we are increasing concentration, and remember, uh, once you increase concentration, it would uh, actually increase the rate of the of the reaction, right? They say draw a new graph on the same uh, paper to show what effect it will have, right? So I'm going to assume that the magnesium ribbon uh, is the limiting reagent. I I don't think they really said that here. So the reaction actually stops when you run out of magnesium, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now draw another graph. Okay. Um, in this case, right. Um, they said I should label that graph X. So that graph X would take place at a higher rate 
but you'd still get the same amount uh, of magnesium, uh, uh, sorry, of hydrogen at the end, right? So uh, you would actually, uh, it would go higher. So this would be graph X in blue, all right? Showing me that there's a higher reaction rate. All right, the next graph, oh, sorry, the next question rather, they say, assume that molar gas volume is uh, of, at 25 degrees is 24.47, and then calculate the volume of acid that was used in the first experiment. Remember, in the first experiment, we had 0 0.25 moles per cubic decimeters of hydrochloric acid. Okay. Now, um, so it means I need to find out what is the uh, amount. So uh, remember, they gave me the molar gas volume. So the moment that they give me molar gas volumes, it, uh, volume, rather, it means that I need to use the gas. So the gas is the hydrogen in this case. And remember, at the end of the uh, experiment, I mean, uh, you got 35 cubic centimeters of gas, right? That was formed of hydrogen. So I'm going to say, right, and uh, that's 5.3.4. Uh, right okay just for consistency let me keep to the same color uh, so that yeah we are consistent right so 5.3.4 okay so i am now going to say remember they've given me the molar gas volume so we know number of moles is the volume of the gas divided by the molar volume of the gas, right? Uh, which we were given. So we want to find out what's the volume of the gas. Now, it's in cubic centimeters. You remember the total volume that we got was 35. So uh, remember, I'm going to say 35 divided by a thousand. In this case, that would give me 0 0.035. Okay. So that means 0 0.035 divided by, what's the molar gas volume? That's 24.47. That's 24.47. Okay, so let's get that. 0 0.035 divided by 24.47, right? Okay, I get 0 0.0014. 143 if you want to uh, moles right so now that's the number of moles of hydrogen that was formed right but now remember uh, what are we looking for we're looking for the concentration of the acid so i would now uh, find out what is the number of moles of acid and then use that to calculate the volume right so uh, how do I get the number of moles of acid? I go back to my reaction and I say, look, the um, the ratio between hydrogen. So look at that. For every one, uh, for every two moles of uh, hydrochloric acid, I get one mole of hydrogen. Can you see that? So the ratio is two is to one. So for every two moles of hydrochloric acid, I will get one mole of hydrogen. So the question is, for how many moles will I get 0 0.00143, right? And we cross multiply, x times 1 is x, and 2 times that. Uh, so I'll, all I'll do is multiply that. Uh, so that by 2. Um, and I've got 0 0.002 eight six dot 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 right I'm, I'm not going to remove that answer there right now now that i've got now remember what does x represents uh, it represents the number of moles of hydrochloric acid but remember we we're looking for the volume so i can say number of moles concentrate uh sorry concentration rather uh, is number of moles divided by volume okay um, we were given the concentration of the gas, I mean, of the hydrochloric acid to be 0 0.25, right? Remember that, okay? Um, so number of moles is that amount there, 0 0.286, 
divided by the volume. And of course, you can do your gymnastics here and say uh, cross multiply. You've got 0 0.25 V is equal to 0 0.00286. Uh, and of course, you can divide by 0 0.25. Okay. And our volume uh, in this case, so it's that answer there. Okay. Divided by... Uh, what did I do now? Oh, yeah, I see what I did. Okay, right. Okay, I'm just going to have to discard that whole thing. 0 0.00286. Okay, you divide that by 0 0.25. Uh, I would have preferred that you keep that uh, answer as it was. Okay, and I get a volume of 0 0.011. Uh, four four. If you want to round that up, uh, yeah, I I think I'll keep it at zero point zero one one, um, cubic decimeters. If we were supposed to. Uh, to leave that, in, um, you know, in in two decimal form. Uh, in fact, I've given three there, so you can say zero point zero one, uh, cubic decimeters. Right. Uh, I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Um, I know the last part was uh, just a little bit of a cumbersome question. I'm not sure why they gave it four marks, but nonetheless, it is what it is. All right. Uh, otherwise, uh, I'll see you again next time when we look at the next section. All right. Shop, shop.